tell us about your dog. Alright, so we got Benji and Oscar. They're both Border Collies. Benji's the elder one. He is eight this year. Oscar just turned five. So our dog is called Gucci and she, well, she's a German Shepherd and she's just um, a year old or so. Um, this is Baloo. He's a black Labrador and he is almost two years old. So my dog, um, his name is Luca. He's a Labrador. Uh, he's almost eight months. Uh, his name is a Sable. He's like a, he's a big black Rottweiler. How old was he before he passed away? I think he was like three. It's like, <laughs> how long have you had them? Um, since he was two months old, so got him last year, January. Um, I'm pretty sure about uh ten months or eleven months. Six months, yeah. All their lives, pretty much. We got them both when they were six months old. Uh, Benji came from Murray Bateman, and Oscar came from Sydney. As little puppies, and came here and. The world was a big place and they've been here ever since. Uh, 2013. I remember like when we took him home he was like whining a lot, which was a bit sad but cute. <laughs> What's your history with dogs? Have you had dogs before her? No, we haven't had dogs before him. No, this is the first pet we've had. Uh, no, this is our first dog. We had experience with a cat, but a dog is totally different. No, but my parents apparently had this like puppy they found. Well, what happened to it next wasn't like that nice because it was like run over by like some truck or something. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it's like in Sydney. It's pretty messed up. <laughs> yeah, so I've grown up with dogs all my life. Before Benji Noski, we had Maddie and Monty. They were also Border Collies. So we had them from puppies as well until they died when they were about 15, both of them. And then we got new ones to keep the tradition going. Could he do any tricks? They can do tricks as long as you got a good handful of treats. He can shake. Sometimes he can catch the ball, but you have to aim directly at his mouth, otherwise he won't catch it. Couldn't do like any like cool tricks, but he was like, he was a smart dog, but like. Um. Well, we've taught her to sit, stay, um, lie down, and to shake her paw. He can high five. He can spin now. I don't know if it's a trick, but like he can communicate. He can speak. Speak as in like bark. <laughs> no, like, he knows when we th say things. He can understand like. Let's go outside, or like, let's go pick up mum. So like, he hops in the car. Drop. Good boy. Oh my God. Jump. Belly spin. Belly sit down. Chicken. High five. <laughs> Sometimes it's like hits his head on my. Like, <laughs> Can I have a go? Yeah. Oh my God. So what do I do? Yeah. Just below high five. Yeah. Below high five. He might not recognize your wife. Um, okay. So wait. Boy. My <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Blue high five. Okay. Okay, you can you just start hands. start with like you shake hands, hands and like build your hands. Shake hands. Oh, thank you. And then oh, jump yeah. or something. Jump. So, so you do that. Jump. Just like click your hands up. Okay, he's done. He's like, screw this white guy. Balu speak. Okay, this takes some time. Balu speak. Oh, good boy. Will you speak? Good boy. Is he allowed on the couch? No, they're not allowed on the couch. They've never been on the couch. They're allowed in the house, which is a first. Only Oscar and Benji have been allowed in the house. The other dogs only hardly allowed in the house at all, and they're so only on the family room and the court floor. Oscar and Benji have wormed their way into Dad's heart, and they're allowed anywhere in the house, just not on furniture. <laughs> yes. Yes, he's too cute to say no. If you were able to, how many dogs would you like to have? I reckon two. Two is a good number, because then they've got companionship, but then you're not overwhelmed with dogs all the time. I don't know, let's just, just see how many I could get until I get like overwhelmed and just like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I have like a goal when I'm like 50 and like getting old, have a, like a bunch, at least like 10, you know, you need to like keep yourself occupied. I'd get one more because um, I feel like it'd be nice for Luca to have a companion. Uh, I'd say about two anymore would be too crowded. Do you think it's hypocritical to be a pet owner and still eat meat? What? I mean, I don't know. When you eat meat, you don't really think of like cows being slaughtered. Oh. <laughs> no. Okay. I don't. I don't see the correlation between right. not eating meat and having a pet. Okay, so what do you mean hypocritical? Do you think it's fair to say that one animal is worth more than another, like it deserves to live compared to another? I don't know. Well, I guess it might depend on what... Mm, 
somewhat, but like a cow is like more of a farm animal. Um, no, um, that's a good question. I hadn't really thought about it, but eating meat is part of culture and history. Like it's just we're omnivores. We eat meat. Dogs eat meat. It's just the way it is. I think it's a circle of life, you know. We die and we become part of the earth. Animals eat the grass that we're part of. And, you know, it's not only us, like, lions eat other animals. It's more of a companionship, if anything, you know. It's for building relationships with the dog, which is better than not having any kind of relationships with animals, at, like, all together. Yeah, I don't think it's hypocritical. So what is your culture's perception on dogs? Um, not to have them. <laughs> Okay, so there's a lot of controversy regarding dogs because in Islam, the religion wherein, owning a dog is a hot topic. Some people are fine with it, other people can't stand dogs around them. I think everyone loves dogs. If not, it's because they're scared, because they're not used to having them. The rules that you can't own a dog or was it based like 1,500 years ago, right? In those times, dogs ran wild in the streets. There wasn't proper hygiene or sanitation. I know like dogs all over the streets in like my dad's home country, so straight dogs running all around. So as long as the area you're, you're in is clean with the dog, then it's fine. Um, so what's the most physically and emotionally challenging thing about having a dog? Oh, physically getting out of bed in the morning to take them for walks because otherwise they go mad. Taking him for a walk, like if you can't train your dog on a leash, it's so hard. Like he drags you and like if he sees a magpie, you're gone like he'll drag you like like a car or something going out for long extended walks then you have to go with her for like like an hour or an hour and a half every day so she gets the same amount of exercise emotionally probably whenever they hurt themselves just because they don't show pain like one time oscar cut his face open under his chin on a bit of wire it was running around blood going everywhere he didn't even care it was just a bit traumatic luca he recently he had to go through surgery and i feel like because he's a bit dumb, he eats anything. I feel like that's always going to be hard for us if he has to go to the wet again. It's also sometimes hard to understand how she's feeling and like all that. When he, like, he passed away, it was like, like all of us were upset. Like my little sisters were crying and like, if your dog like, if you lose your like, if, if someone precious like passes away, it's difficult and like, my dad said he didn't like want to buy another dog because like, he didn't want to like experience that again. What's something you wish you knew before you got your dog? I wish I knew how to walk the dog, I think. I think that's the main thing that like really challenges me. It's because we, I came, come back with like bruised hands from like the leash like almost getting out of my hand. Yeah, teach him tricks, you know. <laughs> I mean like teach him like to like backflip or something. Backflip. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I wish that I knew that they were much easier to keep than what we thought. Before we were like, oh no, how are we gonna cope with the dog around the place? It's like having another baby. It starts off hard the first few weeks, but then it gets it's like part of your routine. You wake up, you feed the dog, you say you play with the dog and everything. She started trusting us one by one and it just became a lot easier. What's the worst thing that has happened to them? Uh, he died. <laughs> <laughs> well, Oscar splitting his face open is pretty bad. Yeah. But for Benji, he's torn both the crucial ligaments in his knees. So he has difficulty walking and he's in pain a lot of the time. I'm not sure how it happened. I mean, we were overseas and then he was fine for a little while until he got sick all of a sudden. And he got all skinny. <laughs> Do you regret anything when it comes to your dog? No, not in the slightest. Yeah. Having dogs is wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'm not walking him for nothing. Like I wasn't like really actively playing with him because I was like spending focus on my like my school life. And so like oh yeah, and I didn't like <laughs> none of my none of my friends at that time knew him because like for some reason I didn't talk about my dog, so that I wish my friends could like all see him. Why do dogs have such a huge impact on our lives? I think they're just full of innocence and like they love playing I think. Like they're just always up for a play. I can wake up my dog at like 4am in the morning and be like, oh let's go for a walk and he'll be so excited. You know, he's just always up to play. He'll talk back and he'll be sassy and you know. And it's just fun. He doesn't like have any sense of anger or I want to ruin your life or something. I don't know. <laughs> something like that. So he's. Really just full of heart, I guess. Dogs are really, I think, full of heart, I guess, yeah. 
because they kind of become a part of our family, you know? They're always gonna rely on us. We always need to take care of them and they provide us with love and affection and we need to give it back to them. They're warm and fuzzy and like, you can play with them and like, everyone loves them. It's like, that, like that, that's how I thought of it ever since I was a kid. So I was like, I got really excited about the idea of getting a dog. It's like, I think it would be like so fun. And it was. <laughs> They're just always there, like whenever you're feeling a bit bad or down or school stressed you just got a dog who's looking at you, big eyes, wagging his tail and they just have that connection with you, it just makes life better.